Welcome to Inspired, a new six-part radio documentary series from Seeds of Peace. I'm one of your hosts, Bilal Qureshi. And I'm Marissa Mazria Katz. I'm a journalist working in New York City. And I'm a radio reporter and producer based in Washington, D.C. This series is inspired by Seeds of Peace. For more than 25 years, the organization has been bringing young people together from across lines of conflict and cultivating new generations of global leaders. We are here, we are part of this America whose identity, I believe, is almost always changing. The political situation in Israel is the driving force behind all of my social work. For these audio documentaries, we've been traveling and meeting some of those people from the schools of Lahore, Pakistan. These are the young people who are going to change the educational landscape of Pakistan and change it for the better. To the music studios of Jaffa, Israel. Art and music can serve a safe space for communication that's beyond Jewish or Arab, beyond whatever wall there is to be put. From the refugee camps in Palestine There's a kind of little light in such big darkness. To the south side of Chicago. It was more about wanting to show other people that they're capable of being better, doing better, and seeing better. We'll hear about their inspirational journeys and the ways they've inspired others. Bilal, this episode is the story of a road trip. A road trip through one of the world's longest running conflicts. Behind me is the sound of Ramallah, the current seat of the Palestinian government. Marissa, I just, as I hear that, I think about how there really isn't anywhere in the world that feels like a greater symbol of just how fragile peace can be. I've been working in and around the region for a decade and a half, and it's hard not to see this biblical landscape as a political tinderbox. There's a massive concrete separation wall that cleaves villages in two and makes getting in and out of most places take hours. To be an emissary of peace here is not easy. And yet the man I've come to meet is not only one of the warmest people I've ever encountered— Peace is what he holds steadfast to, even as the world around him is in perpetual change and conflict. Welcome. Come in. This is Abu Tariq. He's a 60-year-old father from the Palestinian refugee camp El Arub. He has three children, all of whom attended the Seeds of Peace camp in the state of Maine when they were teenagers. He was also a delegation leader at the camp. And it's why I traveled thousands of miles and through several checkpoints to meet him. Marissa, tell me a little bit more about Abu Tariq. Where did he grow up? Where is he from? His family was forced to leave a village now located inside Israel called Iraq al-Manshia. And his parents moved the entire family to the West Bank. He was among six siblings. And when they left, they took nothing with them. Their situation in the West Bank was dire and they lived in extreme poverty, no electricity, and barely any space for a family of eight. The story of my dad is a good reflection of the suffering that refugees uh, have gone through. This is Bushra, Abu Tariq's daughter. She's also a seed. One of the first stops on our road trip was to visit her with Abu Tariq in her home on a hillside overlooking Ramallah. Marissa, what does Abu Tariq do in Palestine? He's an educator, but he's also a change maker. Even as a young boy, he saw education as a way to transform the world around him. It's what enabled him to not just survive, but truly thrive amidst one of the world's longest running and most controversial conflicts. Abu Tariq's passion for education started when he was just a young boy. At the time, his family was still reeling from the 1948 war, so they had very little means. And finding a place to study was a huge challenge. And you know, at that time, we don't have electricity. So we have uh, lamps, oil lamps. So I used to wake up early in the morning. When the sun rises, I took my book and study under the trees till, you know, maybe... um, 7.30 7.30 before school starts. And Bilal, that tenacity enabled him to go farther than anyone in his family ever dreamed. With the minimum sleep, three jobs, uh, he managed to graduate Bethlehem University from um, English literature with honors and was immediately offered um, a job. 
So these stories are the stories that tell you what it actually means to be a refugee in Palestine. The world around Abu Tariq radically transformed with his degree. He embarked on a life-altering journey that took him throughout the West Bank, where he was a teacher and a principal at several schools. And each place he worked, he watched the lives of the young men and women around him upend narratives and recalibrate the scripts about what their lives should look like. In spite of all the difficulties around them, they should fulfill their aims. Not only see we are poor, we are uh, under pressure, and we need somebody to help us. No, it is your, your strength which can help you to overcome all these difficulties and build your personality, empower yourself, then you can, for example, be very useful for your family, for community, and for your people everywhere. Marissa, you described this as a road trip through Palestine. Tell me about where you went with Abu Tariq. Right, so during a road trip, I got to see some of his work in action. And we visited El Arub. Um, this is where he runs a day camp for boys and girls. But it's also where he raised his three children. And for many years, he was a principal at the school there. This is my school while I, when I was a school principal. Yani until the year 90. Marissa, can you describe for me what does El Arub look like? What, 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 how would you describe the landscape there? So you have just one road that leads you in and out of here. And as you drive in, there's a checkpoint and a gate. So ostensibly, the whole refugee camp can be cut off from leaving if this gate is closed by the Israeli army. And on the day we drive in, it is really hot and the air is thick. Abu Tark lives just off the main street, which is hugged by a narrow, uneven concrete sidewalk. And buildings are spray painted with red and black graffiti. You know, here we're walking through the camp. Uh, this is uh, the main market the main shopping center. He took me for a walk down the main street, which has a smattering of shops, some open, some shuttered. And nearly everywhere we went, he runs into people he knows. And so many of them are former students of his. Rami is one of my students, but he is the the laziest one. (laughs) Just joking. His camp runs twice a year, once in the summer, once in winter, and there's very little money for the project. He is the, my kindest neighbor. The unemployment rate here is high, but I would say the bigger concern is the size of the city. The population continues to grow, but legally, they can't widen the camp's footprint. So, Marissa, what you're describing sounds like a very physically compacted, sort of tight space. Yeah. Basically, you get these incredibly narrow streets that barely fit one car. And you see it is a lot of houses, you know, like very near to each other, like because this is a refugee camp. There just aren't many things that people can do here, especially when school is out for break. This is why Abu Tark's camp is so important to the residents here. This is why I make summer camp, because the students are free to play, to dance, to move freely. So this is my aim. It is a kind of little light in such big darkness. That's very powerful language, the idea of light and and darkness. You know, Bilal, Abu Tark is not a young man. In fact, his schedule has slowed down significantly in recent years. But... Abu Tariq's sensitivity and hope was really astounding, given the feeling of stagnation here and and just in general with the conflict. And you're referring, of course, to the now decades-long conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis that's sort of the defining experience for so many people here. Well, I think it's important to note that I arrived soon after the Trump administration moved the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It was a historical precedent that kicked off major protests. You know, and every day, it seems more and more of what would become Palestine in a negotiated treaty is being taken away and given to settlers. The victims are mostly the kids because they think throwing stones at the settlers is a kind of a play. But the result was that the loss of their life for nothing, because this is a very unuseful way to ask for freedom. 
to ask for right to live, right to travel out of the camp. And my part is giving uh, non-violent communication skills and how to overcome trauma that happened to them. And I think this is why Seeds of Peace is such an important part of Abu Tariq's life and why he clings to the groundbreaking work the organization is doing. Seeds of Peace teaches children to live the life they want, to give them a freedom, the space to be a good listener, to know when to talk, and to, un- to understand the mentality of others and to respect others. Marissa, I've loved this idea as you've taken us to meet Abu Tariq, that this has been this road trip that you've been with him. Uh, tell me about where you went next, where you went afterward. Abu Tariq took me to visit the memorial to Palestine's national poet, Mahmoud Darwish. And we drove through all the congestion of the afternoon traffic in Ramallah to get there. Uh, now uh, we are uh, accompanying Marissa to Mahmoud Darwish. Mahmoud Darwish is a famous international Palestinian poet who used to write his poetry about uh, peace and making light of Palestinian people to live. The story of Darwish sort of mirrors Abu Tariq's. They were both forced to flee their homes and lived the rest of their lives as refugees. And in the car on the way over to Darwish's memorial, he told me about one of his favorite poems he wrote, which was called To My Mother. I'm eager to eat my uh, uh, bread of my mother. Uh, and all his poetry like this, يعني, uh, re- uh, reminds people of uh, the life in his village, Al Burwa. It is inside uh, Israel now. I'm not sure if it is open or not. The memorial is carved into a hillside that overlooks the entire town. But it's a beautiful place here. And you can have a good view of Al Masyun. Here, area. gently Rain sloping Rain steps hug area. rose bushes and stretches of thick green grass. I walked with Abu Tariq all the way up. You see the wedding? Yeah. We passed a bride posing for photos in a wedding dress with her soon-to-be husband. Although we don't know them, but, you know, it's good to see such couples here. Winds gusted all around us as he showed us the memorial. What what kind of stone um, are these steps here? We call it marble, white marble. They uh, cut it out of uh, mountains. And in most of the houses in Palestine are built of white stones because it is strong and it uh, it doesn't, it isn't affected by all the weather changes. So it still become white. As we trekked up to the top of the memorial, Abu Tariq read passages that were carved into the white marble. Min Filistin ila Mahmoud Darwish in English called From Palestine to Mahmoud Darwish. Then I asked him what the story of Darwish meant to him as an educator, a father, a son, and also as a Palestinian. When you read his poetry, he encourages you to love people, to love land, whatever it is, and to love your family, to love your mother, neighbors. You know, his poetry is very uh, peaceful, and this is why he resembles the sacrifice of Palestinian educator, Palestinian uh, intellectual people, of every Palestinian refugee. He's a real reminder that learning itself is inspiration and the ultimate means to inspire others to rise. Marissa, thank you so much for taking us to Palestine with you on this road trip. Um, given what surrounds Abu Tariq in his daily life and what he's personally had to endure that you've described, it really is a story of resilience. He's by definition an inspired individual. 
You've been listening to Inspired, a six-part radio documentary series brought to you by Seeds of Peace. I'm Bilal Qureshi. And I'm Marissa Mazurek-Katz. Thank you for joining us.